Okay, welcome to class. Uh, you're going to be doing some Photoshop today. This is our second tutorial for Photoshop. So uh, in today's or yesterday's class, you created a sphere. Uh, today we're gonna be learning about the clone stamp um, and a little bit of cut and paste. So we're gonna be basically doing this and this tutorial today. So this uh, tutorial we will cover in this video. And there'll be a second second video for the C star. Okay, so first thing you need to do is get to the website. So we are going to grade 10 and we're going to Photoshop, which is unit four here. Okay, and then we're gonna scroll down to here where it says activities and completion tasks. You're gonna click on completion tasks, which will take you to this. There's a bunch of these things here. Here's where we're at. If you click on this image here, it's going to open up this guy. You can do two things, you can three things. You can save the image, you can drag the image from here onto the desktop, or you can drag it straight into Photoshop and Photoshop will open the file. All right, once you've got the file in Photoshop, any way you decide to do it is fine. Once you've got it open, we're going to uh, we'll do a couple things. First, we're going to reset our essentials. So we're going to go essentials and reset essentials to make it so that you are looking at the same thing I'm, that I am looking at so you can find things if you need them. All right, um, let's take a look at what we're going to be working with. This is a, a tutorial on this, the clone stamp, also called the rubber stamp. If I go back over to um, what we're doing here, Using the clone stamp tool, turn one of the solid lines into a dotted line, ensuring that the image will remain realistic. We're trying to Photoshop this so it doesn't look Photoshopped. So right now, what you'll see is a double solid line. We want to make it so that this line, one of them, is a dotted line, as in a, a dashed line. Okay? So the tool we're going to use is uh, the, the rubber stamp here. Okay? What you'll see is I've got you know a little cursor here. And with this tool selected, let's first just take a look at some options. I want to make sure that your options match mine. So don't worry about this guy for now. Also make sure that you are on the, the clone stamp, not the pattern stamp tool. You want the top one. So make sure that you haven't got that selected. Okay, you want the top one. All right, things that matter here, you want to make sure that your mode is normal. Okay, your opacity is 100, your flow is 100, and that you're on current layer for this. Okay, so just take a look at your settings. They should match this pretty closely. The one that doesn't matter is for now is this because we're going to be changing this, all right? But just so you know, this works much like a brush does in that it changes the physical size of my brush, okay? There's a shortcut for that, which is the square bracket. So if I put my cursor here, oops, if I put my cursor here and I go square bracket to the right and square bracket to the left, it'll make my, my brush bigger or smaller. Okay, uh, so that that's a shorter shortcut for this guy here, and then there's also a hardness uh, selector, which means I'm going to either have a hard edge, and what you'll see here is a hard edge, and uh, a soft edge. Okay, and that is the, uh, the brush tools. Okay. Sorry, interrupted there, but someone at the door. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to uh, I'm going to um, show you how to use this tool. So, the uh, if you just go and click, you're going to get this dialog box, and it says, "Could not use a clone stamp tool because the area clone has not been defined." If you think about the word clone, clone means to duplicate something, to make a copy of something. So, this is trying to make a, a clone or a copy of some part of your image, but you haven't told it what part of the image to clone. So, it's saying here the area to clone uh, has not been defined. So. Then it tells you what to do, option click to define a source point. So I'm going to hold option, and what you'll see is my cursor is going to change to this little target guy, okay? And if I hold option and I click, so say I click on this mountain here, okay? It's going to use that mountain. You can see my cursor is now previewing what was at the point that I set my source at. If I, if I hold option again and select a new source, you'll see that it's previewing what it's going to draw. But I'm going to go back, I'm going to again choose that mountain. And so what I can do is now draw right here and draw in that mountain and I did a pretty bad job but you get the idea I can pick up part of an image and draw it somewhere else so say I want this tuft of grass here I can click here and then I can just add it on this side okay? and I can probably add a couple of them again hold option I'm gonna put one right in the middle of the road here okay so I'm, I'm drawing from one part to the other I can pick up some of these lines if I wanted to and I I don't know why I would possibly do this, but I can draw in any part of the image anywhere I want. Okay, and that's by holding Option, selecting a source, and then drawing to wherever you want. Okay, well, what we're going to do, let's revert that. Let's go back to our history. I'm going to open my history up, and I'm going to go back to my original image. Okay, I'm going to close history. All right, we're back to our image. Now, if you remember, it said here 
that you're going to turn one of the solid lines into a dotted line. Okay, well let's take a look at how we do that. I want to I want to get rid of some of this sort of area in here. I want this to disappear, and I want it to look as if it were not painted yellow, right? If you imagine that at one point this didn't have any yellow lines, it was just an asphalt road, and then they painted this yellow on top. Well, I want it to not have that paint. To do that, I'm going to use part of the road that is not painted, as in this part right here, and I'm going to use this and draw it here. So let's take our clone stamp, and I'm going to—I'm actually going to get a smaller brush, and I'm going to zoom in a bit. So Command Plus, and then once I'm zoomed in, Command Plus again, I'm going to use my space bar to get the pan tool. Okay, and I'm going to kind of align myself there, let go of space, and I'm back to my my tool. I'm going to rub my brush, uh, my rubber stamp tool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a, a starting area, and I'm going to I'm going to maybe sort of pick this little crack here, crack the pavement. I'm going to click like here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw away the part that I don't want, so this this brush. Now what you'll notice is as I get closer here, I'm actually starting to redraw the part that was missing because I've gotten very close. If I start here, as soon as I get to here, when I'm drawing, it starts to, to redraw you know, the part that was there. So you've got to sort of do this in stages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here. I'm actually going to get an even smaller brush. I'm going to start here, and I'm going to just kind of draw the outside here. Okay, and then I'm going to, again, select this area. And I'm going to go a little bit further in, to say there. All right, now I want this to be pretty straight. Like if you imagine a, a, a paint this is painted by a truck, but the paint truck would spray this. It would be a pretty straight line. It wouldn't be so messy like this. So let's look at ways that we can change this brush. Now I could probably make a really small brush and kind of just, you know, do my best like this, but I'm going to show you another way that I think works even better. Okay, so I could do that. And that does a decent job, but let's look at another way to do this. Let's revert this back to our original. I'm going to change my brushes here. So I, I went to my little brush drop down here. And there's a setting here. Now right now, let's open this up so you can see, the brushes that are here are the basic brushes. So if I click this here, okay, I've got uh, the basic brushes, that's what I'm looking at. I'm going to change this down here to square brushes, and it's going to ask me, do I want to add or append those brushes to this list, or do I want to just put, like, replace them? I want to replace them. So I'm going to say, okay, replace current brushes with the brushes from square brushes. Okay, and now gone are the basic brushes, and Additionally, are the square brushes. If, for example, I want all of them, I can say okay. I start with my basic brushes, and if I if I choose square brushes and I say append, it's going to add them to the bottom. Okay, now you may want that. Uh, it's up to you. I'm going to now that I've got it appended, I'll do that same thing. So I'm going to go to let's say a five pixel square, and I'm going to do the same thing I did. I'm going to option, select my source, and start drawing. And you'll see it does a nice straight line for me. Same thing. I'm going to Shift click, click to make a straight line, and I'm going to finish that in like that. Now, you, I know you'll notice I just said shift click. What that what shift click does is if I click here and then hold shift, it's going to draw from my first point to my second point. Okay, so I'm going to go and I'm going to do a little bit of a better job than I did there. So let's undo that. Okay, I'm going to select my source draw my line up to about maybe there. And I might zoom in and fix that because you can see there's a little bit of yellow in there that I want to clean up. But I'm going to hold shift and click down here and it's going to draw, oh I got a little too close there. I'm going to do it here. Shift click to here, shift click to there. I might actually, now that I've got a bit more to work with, I might draw from here. Okay, and then again start from here. Select, my, select a new source here, and then start here, hold shift, and color that in. Now, that looks all right. It's a little bit harsh. If you if you actually zoom in here, you'll see that I've got like a really straight line. And in reality, if you look, this is what things look like if you zoom in. They're just a bit more messy than a perfectly straight line, right? That's, that's reality. That's what it looks like in the image from the photo. And this is what we've done. Now, if you zoom out, that doesn't look too bad, 
But if if someone's you know paying close attention, they're going to see that and go, that's that's a very straight line. That doesn't happen in reality. So what I might do there, there's a couple ways to do that. I could maybe take a, a round, a soft edge round brush, like maybe this, and just sort of blur that edge a little bit. Right? I'm holding the space bar to get that pan tool. I might just blur that edge just a little bit, and that's going to make it look just a little bit kind of more realistic. There's kind of a fine line between like realistic. Uh, and messy, right? You want it to look realistic, but you also don't want it to look like a big mess. So that's kind of what I'm going for. Now I'm going to, I've removed the paint from there by using this, and I'm going to do the same thing sort of here, and here, and here, and here. Now as you probably can see, as things get further away, they get smaller. And as they get further away, they also get, if, they, if I'm talking about this space, that space is going to look smaller. So I'm going to have to appropriately make each dash kind of smaller as I get further back. And back here, you're probably not even going to be able to tell that they're, they're just, they're, uh, there's a gap there just because it's so small. But very quickly, I'm just going to go in and zoom in here. If you, when you view, if you zoom in and you see this, uh, something called the pixel grid, or if you zoom in really close and you get this, I really don't like this pixel grid. I find it really distracting. Okay, so if you want to get rid of that, you just go view, show, and turn off pixel grid to get rid of those white lines. I find this really annoying. So if you want to do that, you're welcome to. Okay, so I'm very quickly going to just uh, wrap up what I'm doing here by, um, you know, the same method I just used. I'm going to go in, shift click, shift click. Now you're going to do a little bit of a better job. I'm kind of rushing it because it's a tutorial. Uh, and I won't spend too much time on this. But you get the general idea. It comes down to just a little bit of like, uh, sort of playing with the software and trying to get things reasonably realistic. Okay, that looks pretty decent. Okay, at 100%, command one to go 100%. Command plus to zoom in, command minus to zoom out. Okay, and zoom in. And you are gonna do a similar thing where, so you're just gonna take your source. Okay, and this space is gonna be a little bit smaller than my original, because as, like I said, as things get further away, they get smaller. So the gap between these is going to get smaller because it's further away. And you're going to do that further and further away. It's going to get smaller and smaller until you're done. Okay? Once you're done, you're just going to go file and you're going to save this in your workspace. So on your desktop, you should have something that's called a uh, unit name. You're going to save it in a unit. You probably want to create a new unit because we're on a new unit called Photoshop. And you probably want to save it in there along with you probably also want to, to save this as well in your Photoshop unit because that's where we're going to be working. On saving stuff. Okay, so save your save your work as a JPEG and a PSD. So now I need two files. I need to save this as file, save as. I need a PSD, which is a Photoshop document right here. And that's going to keep all of my, when I'm working in, in layers, which we haven't done yet, but when we're working in layers, it's going to keep all of our raw data. Okay, and you're going to save another file as a JPEG. The JPEG is the one you're going to put on your website. And you should do that now. When you're done this, when, you, when you're happy with your work, you should save a JPEG and you should upload it to your website so that it is uh, finished and submitted and everything can be checked by me at a later date. All right, hopefully that made sense. If you're not sure, rewatch the video. And if you're still not sure, ask your neighbor. I expect that you'll be able to get this done in uh, the period. So if you have any, uh, any questions, try and figure them out by watching this video again or by checking with someone who knows what they're doing. Okay, good luck.